Ninjago Dragons Rising episode 11 review. Now, uh, I never reviewed the episodes prior to this, but I'm gonna start with part two. Um, Temple of the Dragon Energy Cause, which is episode 11. Now, what my opinion is on this video, I'll give you a quick synopsis. So, spoilers ahead. Um, I will be doing reviews for the next 10 episodes too. So, here we go. So, for Ninjago Dragons Rising episode 11, Temple of Dragon Energy Cause, basically, Lloyd is, um, Basic, they basically at the start of the episode they all go to protect Ninjago City from the Merge Quakes, opening basically this new part. Now, also what's happening in Imperium is people such as that those guys that uh, Eren had met in the end, end of the season know that the dragons escaped, and they have sort of told people that dragons did escape, but no one hence believes them. Now, this brings on future problems for Imperium, but this is an, a problem for Empress Beatrix. Now she's got to worry about her plan, and yeah. She sends Raptor to go spy on the ninja, and basically Lloyd is keeping the monastery in the best condition he can possibly do, like Master Wu did. But they find out more about the Merge Quakes and where to go. To learn more and they go to the spirit of temple energy cores wrapped in follows of course and pretty much they unlock the puzzle to get in the spirit attacks them lloyd being the smart one and throughout the episode being very clean and organized fixes the place up and then the spirit is calmed now this is weird and a nice little episode because we also get sora erin and wildfire they know now uh, if you remember that clip, that basically Lloyd is the grandson of the first Minjutsu Master. Which, hence, I don't know why that was never explained. Even Sora says that. Anyhow, this, um, they go back to the temple, they, they get information to search for the free of dragon energy cores, and yeah, that's pretty much the plot of this episode. Introduction episode for part two, I have to say it's really well done. It's not a big story, it's not a big problem, not a big arc, but what it does is it draws a line in the sand for what's to come in these future seasons. I'm really actually looking forward to this, and how they start off this season, and how they gradually get to the point on what they need to do in this part, they work it perfectly. I have to say, what this series does best is, five episodes will be what's the plan and how we do it, and then... Basically, the last five episodes will be for doing the plan and for fixing all the problems. If this is not in part one or not in part two, it's the same sort of storyline, same sort of arc, but they do manage to deliver this story and episodes perfectly. Dragon's Rising has to be really good. This episode 11 opening, perfect. Tell me your thoughts in the comments, like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. You guys have been amazing. Peace! The Jago Dragons Rising episode 12, Gangs of the Sea. This is my review, and let's get on with it. Now, Gangs of the Sea starts pretty much off, which I'm going to say spoilers ahead. So it starts pretty much off simply, uh, the ninja is split off into three different teams. Kai, Wildfire, Mia and Sora, and then Lloyd and Eren. Zane stays back with Mr. Frohiki to protect the monastery and to... So Zane can do some more stuff, which we'll talk about in later episodes. Now, let's just talk about Lloyd and Aaron, because this is their episode. Lloyd and Aaron are off on the a bounty, their destiny's bounty. Uh, they're off on their own mission. They do stumble across the Red Sea as their motor goes down. Lloyd and Aaron do a bit of training. Aaron ex expresses that he can't do that spin jutsu attack that he used to. Lloyd and Aaron train for a bit until things go a little haywire. They get lost. They try to get help. They get attacked, etc., etc. They find these people that are willing to help them, but they need their tools, which are on an island. Lloyd says, we'll help you get your place back from uh, the Malopians who look like they're controlling this huge crab. Uh, so Lloyd, Aaron go to help them. They fight the battle and realize that it wasn't the Menelopians who were using that crab to attack the village. It was the opposite way around. The crab was using that, using this orb thing to control the Menelopians, which is sad. And it's really cool that the Menelopians are getting more character development. Basically, Lloyd saves the Melopians and they pretty much take the crab pretty much down. And both team, um, 
teams, the uh, sort of sea people and uh, Malopians sort of live in peace and harmony by the end, and Lloyd and Aaron set on to their merry way. The fight scenes, the action in this episode is really, really amazing. Ninjago, this new season of Ninjago knows how to develop its characters and have an episode literally focused uh, to one or two characters and a whole plot based on a short little quick story and it knows how to write a great story for an episode. Lloyd and Aaron's juro that di- 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 I can't even say the word. Their team bonding exercise, their group leadership, their juro team up is always amazing to see. Lloyd and Aaron is great. Lloyd is stepping into this new master role and you can really, really, really see it in this new season. Give your thoughts in the comments about the games of the sea. Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. It's been absolutely amazing. Peace. Hey guys, no for Jersey is here, and today I'm reviewing Ninjago Dragons Rising episode 13, Wildly Inappropriate. What a wildly correct name. So the episode starts off in the first couple of minutes. Um, Kai and Wildfire trapped from the in this little basically um cage on the ground where the Bone Warriors have them because Wildfire took their jewels. Um the episode continues and um Zane is back at the monastery trying to fix up the portal gates, seeing how they work, and he needs a a Rocranium coil, or however you pronounce it. And Mr. Frog Hickey assists assists him to go basically into Ninjago City to go find uh that piece. And uh basically this is a Kai and Wildfire episode and a Zane and Mr. Frog Hickey episode. So let's break Zane's down first. Uh, Zane goes into detective Zane mode for a bit um, to try find the coil. Um, he does find a coil, but he has to obviously pay for it. So he enters a competition has a free strike formula storyline that um, happens to come out at the end of the episode, stating and oh, so I should mention a chance of Gekko as a part of this Zane day, because this is Zane day, so Zane has to participate in zany like traditions, um, it's really cool to see this actually play out, and is really, really cool, sorry about yawning, but, um, I'm not tired or bored, but this episode is wildly fun, um, Zane basically goes through obstacles, and he doesn't win any, because sometimes there are mistakes from other people, and the judges are pretty crappy. Basically, this episode teaches Zane in particular that he feels like he's changed since the merge, but the truth is he hasn't, nor has none of the other ninja. If anything, they've grown up a lot more. And it's just a nice little arc that Zane gets, and just something that we can understand as viewers watching the show. That the ninja have grown up, but they haven't changed. Change is obviously inedible for everything in everyday life, but these ninja will never change, but they will grow up. Even further, this episode grows Kai up a little more, because Kai and Wildfire basically goes to the wildness, and basically Wildfire is a big, uh, famous person in the, um, Tiva Lava Tides, and, um, they will love her. Not they really hate her, and basically she's wanted. She does a whole heap of challenges. Uh, she cleans up everything for them, uh, but obviously they don't give her the core back uh, or the core at all. They don't believe she'll ever change. So Kai and uh, Wildfire go to get the core, and they basically get up on top. But then, um, what's his name? Duramu comes and the episode just ends like that. Positives about this is the ninja have very much grown up and it's really nice to see them grow. Seeing Zane's story and Kai's story is really nice and I think they did a really great job on this episode. Kai and Wildfire will get in the next couple of episodes. We'll talk about little snippets in there and I think this is a good way to explore characters so tell me your thoughts in the comments what do you think of zane day what do you think of kai and wildfire what do you think of zane and mr froggy they them all working together those two separate character uh, missions what do you guys think in the comments peace out guys hope you guys enjoyed 
Ninjago Dragons Rising episode 14, Velocity. Now this episode uh, kicks back off from episode 14. I didn't speak at the cre uh, end part of episode 13, only because it sort of connects to episode 14. This is Nian Sora episode based on the Lost Gen, and I recommend spoilers ahead, but this episode's been out for a month now, so you've been warned anyhow. This episode also does not contain any information based upon season six of Skybound, so adding that in there too. Now, Philosophy starts off with Nia and Sora having to find a dragon energy core. It wasn't in the spot they thought it was, but they uh, go into this like little tomb and they try to open it up um, with these magical jewels. Sora and uh, Ryu sort of get into a little bit of a trap. They have the Clutch Powers uh, book manual from season 11. Basic stuff happens, Nia tries to match the cores in, then Sora is basically telling her in between this that she's been a curse to his team, etc, etc. Just opening it up to her, um, but little does both of them know, they just got cursed by uh, using these uh, magical elements that they shouldn't have been using, uh, which uh, only a djinn can break, and luckily enough, there is still a djinn, but that's for the later part of the episode. Basically, these two spirit guys come out. I forgot what they were called. Those guys come to attack with their sound radiation power. And basically, Nian sort of really get hurt. But um, the two dragons were able to take Sora and Nia to a uh, cave hidden away. And this has the last Jin in there. Um, the last Jin actually knows the Sora dragon. I forgot what he called her, but she does have a proper name that isn't Sora. Uh, which is really cool again. Uh, and I like how they addressed that Sora's real name is Anna, and this uh, Sora dragon has a different name. So Sora isn't their real names, but I think Sora, 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 the human Sora, is a perfect name for Sora. <laughs> yeah, you got me. Anyhow, the last thing continues, um, basically explaining that since the curse wrong got destroyed the sister realm got destroyed too Nia already knew that so she's basically just there uh just containing the information but apparently still he can grant wishes and it's sort of like a magic power that he has as a necklace and it needs to grow from hope and, and all that stuff and, and belief basically Sora believe uh whinges to him that basically ninja don't quit ninja never give up while they're fighting these spirits and oh Erico is like, you might as well just give up, just hit the caucus and die. But Nia's like, no, Sora's like to Nia, whoever whinges and complains like this is yada yada yada. And Nia's like, and then Sora's like, I don't do that, right? And Nia's like, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to talk about it. that. That there's a perfect scene. I love that. Anyhow, Erico make Sora makes a wish to Erico about the curse basically the curse gets lifted and basically we get on our magical way neo wishes that she is able to find the location of the dragon energy core and they basically like a video game arcade get guided with this little compass so yeah we're on to now the breakdown is over and my thoughts on the episode i really like it Wish there was inclusions of Skybound information, like Nia referring to Nanakon, but I totally get the writers might not want to do that right now. It's something that you've got to build up, and I should talk about this in another video, but I will be talking a lot about Erica today in, on my channel, uh, so stay tuned for that. So please tell me your thoughts in the comments, like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Peace. Hey yeah, guys, Northwestern Studios here, and today we're looking at the episode 15, they call it Doom. This is the breakdown, so let's get on with it. We're going to basically split this up in three parts, because one is Kai, one is Nier, and one is Lloyd's. So, let's break it down. So, with Kai and Wildfire, they basically attempt to get the Dragon Energy Core of uh, basically the Rock Monsters and of Durama. Uh, they are able to get the core, um, but why, um, Wildfire's Dragon Heatwave gets really, really injured. 
However, on the other side of the factor, Nier and Sora are basically still with the lost Jin. The lot, they make a wish with him, and they wish to have a compass guiding them to the dragon energy core, which at the end of the episode, we find out that Nier and Sora find coal. Now, with Lloyd and Aaron's spectra, what Lloyd and Aaron are doing is they have finally made it to the Mother Gardens. If you've seen the clip, you've seen the clip. If you've seen the episodes, you understand. I'm not going in chronological audio. I'm just explaining the plot for each character, um, each character story. Lloyd and Aaron get to the Mother Gardens, meet these crabby people. Crabby. Crabs. They look like crabs. I'm pretty sure they're crabs. Or are they slugs? They could be snails, actually. So, snail people. I'm going to go with that. I'm pretty sure they're snails. Um, they go basically to this place and they attempt to take the dragon and you call, but Louis tells Aaron not to steal it because they was told they were guardians. They find the guardians and basically they allow him to take it, but they obviously knew someone, well, there was someone who had come before to steal the energy core, which was Rapton. And Rapton is now put to the death test and they want him to basically get obliterated and destroyed. Uh, but Lloyd, Lloyd does not want this, so he goes through these obstacles to go save Rapton, to save Rapton, and basically, by the end of the episode, Rapton betrays the ninja, and basically, administration comes out of nowhere, takes the dragon energy core, and that's where the episode ends. In my opinion, this episode is really cool. Basically, if this was like a part two season, or a full season, these 10 episodes, this season obviously wants to break down the fifth episode as your midpoint, your mid-season, you've midway through the season, things need to start happening, and this episode works perfectly, showing us where everyone is at in the season. So please, tell me your thoughts about this episode. Like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. You guys have been amazing. Peace out. Ninjago episode 16 Dragon of Dragons Rising is Land of Lost Things. Land of Lost Things is a place in Imperium. It isn't actually explained in this episode, but let's go on with today's review about it. The Land of Lost Things starts off with a main story about Nier and Sora, but let's talk about the side plot. In the previous episode, Wildfire's Dragon Hinkley was, was injured, and now it's up to Kai and Wildfire to help heal the dragon. They find these little crystal parts. Obviously, Kai knows a lot about dragons and has learnt a lot of Master Wu and Rei, his father. So, obviously, he knows a couple of stuff, and he finds these, like, little crystals to help heal the, um, pain that our heat wave is having. So, that's the main plot of Kai and, um, Wildfire's story. It's not something big, and this might, um, even have an effect in the next episode. Can't remember properly. But the main focus of Nier and Sora's episode is finding Cole from the last episode. They come across Cole. Cole actually explains that there's this big monster. He shows Nier and Sora around. Um, basically, Nier and Sora find you now new elemental master of fusion and two kids that Cole has taken in and has been protecting for the last couple of years. Pretty basic stuff. Cole has apparently got an idea in his head that the Master of Fusion makes him do the Golem form. But it, it, we find out by the end of the episode that isn't true. They also have a Dragon Energy Core that is helping basically power this place. But Nia and Sora need it, and Sora was just going to take it. But Sora and Nia want to help first take down this creature. And it turns out this creature is being powered by some sort of, um, what's it called? Um, man-made thing from Imperium. So Nier and Sora uh, and Cole and the rest of the group try to take it down. They are successful, but one of the scientist ladies, I forget her name and I can't pronounce her name properly, come back and uh, try to take the Dragon Energy Core, and I'm pretty sure she was successful, um, which is bad. Um, so yeah, that's what really happens in this episode and i've got to say um for one of these episodes this episode is actually really cool to introduce callback and how they introduced the master of fusion geo does come out and apologize to cole saying that i was afraid you would forget me but it's all duck on a water bridge or water uh, water on a duck whatever that story is but tell me your thoughts in the comments what you think about this episode. Reintroducing Cole is really cool. And I like the Cole, Cole and Geo 
sort of thing. I don't know if that's an open gay couple yet. They haven't really ever explored. I made a video actually talking about Cole and Geo. Why I don't think... I, I would like to see them together, but, like, I don't ever see Ninjago ever being open about this sort of stuff. I don't ha know why. I would like to, but Cole's never got, got into a good relationship and had it through seasons like Kai and Nia uh, and Jay have had, or his name Pixel. So, yeah, please tell me your thoughts. Like, subscribe, and check out, out my videos. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Peace. Hey guys, North of Studios here, and today we're reviewing episode 17 of Ninjago's Dragons Rising. Episode 17, The Administration. Let's get on with it. Now, this episode takes place straight after basically Lloyd and Aaron popped into a portal. Basically, Lloyd and Aaron basically stumble into the administration, and they basically see that this place is really, really weird. Um, they basically get caught from not having ID badges or just any id at all um they are able to escape as a mysterious person who i thought was jay but we'll get on to that later on in this video um was handing notes and had a drawing of lloyd and Aaron perfectly matching the description anywho they follow the um these letters and posts the directions and etc all the way to this door where they have Zane kidnapped, kid, uh, like literally kidnapped and trapped in a basically office. He's doing paperwork for them by force, and the only reason why he's here is he was um, trying to open the portal gates, and as he was trying to open them, he obviously disturbed something, and the administration came to get him. Now, obviously, the administration it, we found out later on in this episode is in the realm of madness huge shocker which is really interesting I, I didn't think that i thought it was a different realm in particular but anyhow they are able to go off but these two other characters from the administration basically um struck them down and they all separate lloyd goes is basically straight going for the uh core while zine falls into a uh, bit of a mm, i would say a bit of a trap um where he finds his ice car um, that he can use. Aaron is in this, uh, place where they are sending people to the, um, where they fi have found people that were in the void, and now they're sending them ba basically to their proper realm. Mm, they're not really doing that, but yikes. And Jay is the subsector of that. Aaron thought he could find his parents, there, but obviously not, but Jay then appears when Aaron runs off, and Jay's only left for 36 seconds, which we've discussed in this video, uh, of the videos. Basically, after that, Lloyd tries to get the energy core, takes the mech off the sky, and now they're basically running away with the dragon energy core, and they make it back peacefully without Jay, because Jay doesn't even interact with the ninja. But I have to admit, this episode is pretty solid and tells a very consistent story. I really, really like this episode. I have no complaints of it. It's just a really perfect episode, and, and, and it, that is its main draw of it, that it basically takes what makes Ninjago really, really good, and showing Lloyd off more as a master in this episode is really very cool. Tell me your thoughts in the comments, what you think of the episode, the administration. Like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Peace. Let's get on with the last three epic episodes of Ninjago Giants Rising, starting off with episode 18's review today, Absolute Power. This story is broken up into sort of three sort of stories. We're going to focus on the small ones first, and let's get on with today's review. Okay, the short little stories for each ninja are basically like this. Nier and Sora are about to leave with Cole, but Cole admits to Nia that... He's been seeing Master Wu spirits. Nia gives sisterly love and says you should go follow it and follow your heart. Basically, that is Nia's side of the story. Aaron, Aaron Lloyd, Zane, Kai, and Wildfire make it back to the monastery. Only with one dragon energy core because the one that Kai and Wildfire got from, from the wildness. Drama had basically gave them a fake copy. So... That exploded in their face very, very well. 
So that was only one dragon core at the monastery. They left that with Mr. Frohiki. And then they went to go trap, basically get into Imperium to attack, um, obviously, Empress Beatrix and get the other two dragon energy cores to stop the merge quakes. Now, on the other side of this, we learn about um, Empress Beatrix and Lord Ross's backstories. Uh, basically, Empress Beatrix had a family. Lord Ross had come in to help that realm out with some making improvement improvements to their land but obviously the emperor did not take kindly to this so he used his other daughter zetrix who has elemental power that she had gotten off him against we didn't find out much about her elements power but hopefully we'll see more of her and apparently we might be definitely seeing more of her um very cool how zetrix has these powers um banishes him but Beatrix has a uh, better plan and with Lord Roz and basically they literally kill off her father in an explosion and then, which is sad, um, and then they um, basically put Zetrix uh, in, in captivity in jail and that's pretty much the whole episode besides Empress Beatrix going really crazy in this episode. She She's very evil and maniacal. What she's done in this episode of Lord Ross just builds up their character a lot, lot more. And just with the dragon energy cores being used to make portals and not working because someone's betraying her is a great story. I mean, the fight scenes with the ninja this uh, season are really, really good. Uh, I have to say, 10 out of 10 with everything that's going on in this episode. To start off the final battle of the season, perfection. Tell me your thoughts in the comments, like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Peace out, guys. Jago episode 19. We are dragons. It is such an incredible episode. So let's break it down. All the ninja arrive at Imperium. Basically attack uh, Empress Beatrix. And the fight scenes in this episode is really, really cool. Sora starts up a resistance. Kai and Wildfire blow up the uh basically i think it's like the fire area where they uh, have their warriors they blow that up where all the weapons are and it's a really cool scene every character is really shown and the kids on part one that were um wanting to be imperium gods uh changed their mind and turned very good um and same with Rapton. They've started a resistance against Empress Beatrix. Empress Beatrix literally loses it. And it's an epic, epic battle. An epic, epic tale. This is one of my favorite episodes of this new season. And the next one will be too. When I talk about Ninjago Possession in my vi big video that should be coming out by the end of this year. When I talk about that, I will be mentioning parts how Ninjago Dragon's Rising feels just like Possession. Most elements from this episode and next episode feel just like a two-parter episode, just like the end of Possession, and it, this works very, very well. I like these two-part, two-episode endings, where it's 44 minutes worth of content of the Drago. It's just really amazing. This is a 10 out of 10 episode. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, like, subscribe, and check out my other videos. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Ninjago Dragons Rising episode 20, the conclusion of this first season of Ninjago Dragons Rising. So let's break this bloody great amazing episode down. Let's get on with it. Now, what is so amazing about this episode? Well, let's start off. Empress Beatrix starts shooting the energy core powers up to the sky, creating more merge quakes, and people are literally going into these merge quakes. Wildfire jumps in, of course, gets basically blown into one. Kai follows in, shooting fireballs, doing some heavy attacks on Beatrix. I feel like I'm playing a soccer game, but let's keep going on a football game, and I'm like the person who's moderating the video telling you everything that is happening. Eren and Sora, on the other hand, are doing their own tactical battles, and that's the same with Lloyd and Zane. Ryu is the next one to get blown into a merge quake while Kai is still shooting fireballs. He goes off to Empress Beatrix and he gets blown out of proportion and into a merge quake. Let's keep going with today's video because next is up Sora. Sora is now worried that she won't be able to use her power to stop the mech because she originally thought she could 
And now she can't. Zane pops out of nowhere again and says, Yes, you can. The power is inside of you. And then she sees her parents and her parents are like, Come on, join the side of evil because you should listen to your emperor. No matter if she is killing your whole population, doesn't matter. Let her do her because she ain't going to kill you. And to be honest, that's pretty messed up, I gotta say. Her parents are shit, I've gotta admit. Anyhow, after, while all that's going on, Eren is doing some attacks, you know, helping out. Well, Kai has been shot out, I did say that before. Rapnir is shocked, and because, you know, vice versa, Kai's allegedly dead. Um, and Nia's like, oh no, my brother's gone. So, like, Nia is feeling what Kai felt maybe in Seabound, you know, sort of hint, 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 was in the second part, which is really cool. Anyhow, they're doing damage, so it unlocks a troop potential. Uh, well, before that, Eren actually was, Empress Beatrix was about to literally send Sora into a merge quake, but Eren threw his disc and then Sora unlocks her troop potential. Which is really, 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 really cool. Now, while all this is going on, they have basically now stopped the Merchquakes. And Empress Beatrix is zapped in the first 11 minutes. And the rest of the 11 minutes, what their plan is to do is to basically go to Ninjago, get all three of the energy cores, and stop the Merchquakes there, there, then, and then. Because Empress Beatrix had a faulty one while one was back in the monastery. So Mr. Froiki is driven by Zane all the way here. While well, Zane isn't driving, he's GPSing it. Um, which is really cool. And then everything happens all at once. And then, boom! Lloyd is able to find the power within, which is the name of the episode. Power within. Well. And there are six... The six original energy cores he saw in his last vision are there, the six symbols. But then there's a seventh one, which we'll talk about in another video. And basically the episode ends there. We lost a couple of minutes, we explore a couple more character developments. Kai and Wildfire and Ryu obviously do come back. They weren't dead, they just got zapped into a merge quake portal. And obviously these merge quake portals obviously worked very differently to the other ones. Obviously because they're man-made. So, obviously, like, you're going to respawn where you were. You just portaled somewhere. I don't really get how that works, but still, in my opinion, very, very cool. But tell me your thoughts on about episode 20 and Dragons Rising in total. Thank you guys for watching. Peace out, guys.